Dude, I feel like what the weight thing is like it's tricky for me, man. Like I'm I, that's what I go to when I'm stressed out, which I tend to be I don't know, like stressed out quite often right now with with all the things I have going on, but that's like the thing. You know, most some people don't eat at all when they're stressed, but I'm just like putting it all in, man. Like thank God I burn like 6,000 calories a day. <laughs> yeah. Cuz really. I'd be I'd be chunky, man. <laughs> The one like bad thing about hybrid is I feel like I can eat literally whatever I want because, and like nothing happens. Like, so that's good and bad. Right. Because then like you, you can get away with it physically because it's not changing your appearance, but like, is it impacting your performance? Probably, you know, right. but like right. I eat a half a jar of Nutella every friggin' day if I wanted to or French fries or whatever. Um, but yeah, that's like the interesting thing about hybrid. I feel like for me is that I haven't had to watch my diet as much and like, not sure if that's more just like, I need to eat more calories. Like I've never eaten as much as I am right now, e either lifting or just run regular running. So it's like, but it's easy to get like, go down like the rabbit hole of like not eating good too. Cause it doesn't really affect you. Um, like the way you look, I guess, maybe as much. Well, is yeah, it Yeah, and when you're when you're combining all these different methods of training, like I feel like lifting weights, like doing bench press and shoulder press, those type of training sessions leave me more hungry than going out for like an hour run or something like that. Yeah. Um so your or body's just... like the big hybrid workouts that take like two freaking hours when it's all said and done and you're like warm up, cool down, you're doing like AMRAP for 70 minutes or some, something nuts, or at least Rich has me doing. So like, I, I feel like I'm a garbage can after I'm like, like whatever I can get my hands on like quickest, you know? So. Doesn't, yeah. uh, is, isn't, uh, isn't Hunter famous for being unbelievably not disciplined except for like a few weeks leading into training and he seems to he seems to do fine short term. <laughs> I'd say I'm very similar in that way too. Um I think I brought this up when we were at dinner in uh Anaheim. Um that like I don't dial in really my nutrition until I'm like two weeks, two weeks from an event, you know, up until that point, it's just kind of fair game. Like I know, I know when my body's craving protein or carbohydrates and I give my body that, but, um, just from like a, like a health perspective, um, kind of watching my macros a little bit more that doesn't happen until like, yeah, two weeks before an event, it's almost like cramming, cramming for a test. So I'm like, I'm not, I can't start like a month out, man. Like that's just too much discipline. I don't have that in me. No, I'm with, I'm with you on that for sure. I thought that was interesting what you were saying about uh, like that carb thing that you do. I don't yeah. know if you want to tell Matt your, can you, your seat. Yeah, Meg, Meg, can you turn your phone, by the way? I, I, re I really regret last time we talked, I didn't do that. And then it looks okay. awkward. Is that better? Totally. There we go. All right, cool. Yeah, I don't think it's like, it's not any like groundbreaking news or anything like that, but um you know, many athletes have done this in the past. And essentially what you do is you deplete your carbohydrates um, leading into a race and your body gets a little bit fat ad ad adaptive. Um, and then you start ins re inserting carbohydrates into your diet as you get closer to the event. You don't want to wait till like Friday because um, you yeah. want your body to absorb carbohydrates and, and recover a little bit more. So, you know, Tuesday or Wednesday, you kind of start sprinkling the carbohydrates back in your diet but up until that point you're probably looking at four or five days of really pulling back on the carbohydrates um and it takes a lot of mental discipline to i was gonna to say stick with that because when you're training you know so hard and me with my my day job like my body is constantly craving carbohydrates so it just takes a crazy amount of willpower to just not give into those those uh those cravings but like when you get to race day man you feel like supercharged superpowers because you got that quick fat ad adaptations and now you're you're feeling like extra energized um because your body kind of got used to 
doing things without the carbohydrates and now you get them and yeah, you just feel like superhuman. Maybe I should try that. I well, don't, don't know. Try maybe, it before. Don't, maybe not before we're world. <laughs> yeah. At one that like doesn't matter or something. Right. Yeah. That's a great idea. So what's your training schedule look like right now? Cause I know you work and you know, you're on your feet a lot during the day yeah. for work. Yeah. So, uh, so the week of, um, the week of Anaheim, I actually averaged like 50,000 steps all week long up until that race. Wow. Um, so like my legs were definitely like feeling a little, little heavy going into that event. Um, but like the training schedule with, with that job is, it's pretty tough, man, because I don't, I have a rule and that's like, when I get off of work, I'm, I'm off of work. Like I get to hang with the family, like there's no more training. So I have to make sure I fit everything in before I go to work. So I pretty much have a window from about 5 a.m. until 8 a.m. to like get everything I need to get done for the day. So I'm usually up around like 4.30, 4.45. Um, so like, for example, the other day I had, normally I'd give myself five or six hours break in between sessions like this, but because of my schedule right now, I pretty much had like 15, 20 minutes break in between. And I had like a 12 mile fartlek run with, um, with burpee broad jumps sprinkled in along the way that took like 85, 90 minutes. And then I had like 20 minutes to just like change my clothes, get a little, get a quick snack in, drink some water. And then I went right into like a Metcon. Um, and like I said, normally I'd give myself like several hours to recover, but I'm having to go right into like my second workout of the day immediately after my first one. Um, and I think to some degree, the workout does suffer a little bit, but at the same time, I feel like it's, I don't know. It's making, it's making me stronger too. Um, yeah. I, I can't really explain it, but like once you kind of get going into the Metcon afterwards, like the first round of something might feel a little rough, a little sluggish, but then your body kind of like gets back into the groove and, and you start rolling again and um, nothing like doing, you know, wall balls and sled pushes and stuff just like right after a hard, like running workout. Um and yeah, like I said, I think the workout suffers just slightly, but um, I think it's making me stronger physically. It's making me stronger mentally. Um, and I've done this before. I did this a few years ago when I was when I was working at UPS and um, training full time. I was having great results on course, and then I took my leave of absence where I was back to just being a full time athlete for about six months, and now I'm back at UPS and balancing balancing everything and um it was a rough start kind of getting back into that flow getting back into that routine but i i just kept telling myself i've done this before and yeah like you can you can do it again but that first week back of just like getting up super early and 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 you know combining two workouts back to back like that took some adjustment getting used to yeah. that um, so like the first week or two, you're just like in a crazy amount of, of just like a fatigue state right. and then, and then your body just kind of adapts and like it becomes the norm. So, um, it's not something I would recommend to like a client or anything like that, right. but because of just my schedule and stuff, like that's just what I have to do right now. And, um, it's nice. It's also nice to just be done with your training by like 8 AM. You're like, man, yeah. I've already done like two hours of shit before anyone's even like gotten up or doing whatever they got to do i'm like i'm done for the day um not completely done because i got to go to work now and deliver packages all day and walk another thirty thousand steps but um it, it feels good to know that my training's like over and done like first yeah. thing in the morning i think and it energizes you for the rest of the day too like i feel so much i i started doing my daughter's older, so she's in school. So my caveat in the morning is I'm slightly limited on the equipment I have currently. Like I'm, I'm building my gym setup, but like 
I have to get her ready for school and for the day, but I do at least one piece in the morning and I, I'm just like, okay, this is my morning movement. It's high rocks, you know, style or, or something that is applicable just because I think sometimes as parents, like you don't know what's going to happen later or like, is your kid on cooperative or like, did they have a bad day or like, what do they have going on just themselves too? So at least I know, like, I like getting something done in the morning just in case like the day turns, you know, completely haywire. And then I'm like, oh shit, I have, don't have time now or, or whatever the case may be. So that's great. It's great. You get it done, especially if you're going to be on your feet all day. Cause I can imagine like, if you're walking slower at work, it's not as big of a deal, but then to do your workout after, and then that be slower, like that's obviously not ideal for you at all. So Absolutely. smart. I just, <laughs> you're disciplined to get up at four 30. It's not something that I can, that I'm doing currently. So like, good for you. <laughs> Cause it's funny you mentioned so that because the, the other day I was coming home from work and I, I pass a track on the way home every single day. Um, and I have a, I have a pretty hard workout on Tuesday, like mile repeats with, with some things sprinkled in. And I was thinking, I had just gotten off of work and I was looking at the track and I'm like, could I go there right now and like crank, crank out this workout? And the answer was like, no, they're like, there's yeah. zero chance after working all day that I could get. <laughs> like even 80% of like right. what I would normally get out of the workout. Um, and yeah, getting the whole getting up early thing is, is tough. Cause I would say during my work week, I probably only average like six to six and a half hours of sleep. And then on my weekends, I try to get like nine or nine and a half to kind of like make up for some of that. So usually by the end of the work week, I'm like completely drained you know, cause I'm only getting yeah. six, six and a half hours. Plus I'm on my feet all day. It's like my body really probably needs like 10 hours yeah. of sleep. Um, so usually, yeah, by like Friday, Saturday, I'm just like, Oh, can't wait till like I get to sleep in and actually get like a meal before I train because all of my training right now is pretty much fasted. Like everything is fasted, which yeah. is another, um, which is another, I think benefit to, to like when I when I actually get to race day because race day we know these events are in the afternoon in the evening um, even at night now at the world championships um, so I actually have I'll have like a few meals I'll have calories in my system um, when it comes to competition day because when I'm training like I'm not going to wake up any earlier than I have to to like yeah. try to get a meal in and let it digest it's pretty much wake up drink a cup of coffee get on Instagram for like 10 minutes and then freaking it's, it's, it's work time, you know, like it's, yep. and I'll have a, I'll have a little something after, after all of my training, but yeah, pretty much all of my stuff is like fasted right now, which, um, yeah, it's hard. I, I like to think that that's helping. Um, but I can't, I can't quantify exactly what that is, but I do think training while fasted, there's some benefit to that. I Brian, do too. Do you... And I do that as well. Go ahead, Matt. Do you have a desire, Ryan, or to do like, okay, I can do the coaching thing and then I get more time to myself if I don't have the, the quote unquote straight job. So I, I, I did the coaching thing and I'm still doing the coaching thing. I have, I have a few clients right now, but I've slowly, since I started work again, I've slowly been just kind of breaking bad news to, to people. Um, but and, why not the go reason, the other way? Why not coach more and do the other one less? Well, I'll give you that. So the, there's two responses. The first one is I'm just not as passionate about coaching as um, some other people in this space. Um, I enjoy writing programs and, and doing all that stuff, but it's not like, I don't know. It's just at the end of the day, it becomes work just like anything else, you know, like, yeah. Um, and, and there's not, there's no health benefits. It doesn't come with a retirement plan um, <laughs> yeah. where, where it's like working at UPS. It's you deal with some bullshit, but, uh, you know, you're taken care of, um, your family's taken care of. Like the other day, for example, Basin broke or he, he spiked a fever out of nowhere and, and was shaking and trembling. And I told Sarah, I was like, let's just freaking go to the ER, like ER right now, like quit questioning it. Let's just go. And it's so nice to have that, 
that comfort of of having like knowing that this it doesn't matter what it costs because like we have some of the greatest at ups we have some of the greatest health insurance like on the planet you know like an er visit is essentially free for me you know and and you know i guess if it was just me i would probably do the coaching thing but since i have a wife and a kid i'm just like i need to do the the more responsible thing and um at least for right now, that's that was going back to work at UPS, and um, who knows what the future holds. But I'm I'm three years in now. I'm if I want to retire, I'm actually only 17 years away from from retiring. If I want to stay longer and get a, a a bigger pension, I I can do that. But I'm just kind of like, man, like I balanced it with being a full time athlete. So when my days of being an athlete are done, like. I've already got this other thing I've been investing in. Um, it's going to keep me fit. It's going to keep me young. Cause I love being outside. I love, I love that I have a job where I get to get, you know, sunlight every day. I get to lift heavy packages and I don't have a boss breathing down my neck. Um, and, and honestly, like a few years ago, I don't know that I would have had this, this uh, maturity to like think that way, but I guess having a kid just kind of like, makes you grow up real fast and um you know like i mean yeah i have like stress just like everybody else but i think overall man my life is my life is pretty good right now i love hearing your perspective just because i feel like like obviously tons of credit to all the athletes out there that are you know top level but that when you have a family, it's a whole different thing because it's such a balancing act of so many different like facets. And like, you're one of the really high male performers that has a family and a young child. And like, I kind of feel that way about myself. Like I have a daughter and I think I like, I like that we get to be an example of like what you can do even with a family, but it doesn't make it easy. And I think people you know, some of the people we compete against, even if they do work full time or they have high demanding jobs, if they don't, if you don't have to go home to anybody and like take care of anyone else. Like it, you got it 10 times easier. You know, you get to work out whenever you want. You get to go to the gym whenever you, like you get to plan your life around you. And we have to kind of like, we, we really can't do that. You know, we're kind of like fitting things in when it, whenever and wherever we can to like make it all work somehow. I still don't know how I do it. So I, it's nice hearing how you do it. Cause there are days where I'm like, when am I getting this done even still? So I like hearing your, your perspective on it. And I'm sure it's like, my daughter's a little older. So there are like pros and cons to that, where she's involved in a lot more stuff of her own, but she's also very self-sufficient. And I know your son's a toddler. So like, that has its own element to it as well, where like they still obviously heavily need you, um, you know, but like he isn't as involved in other extra things. Like he's not at school. There's not school events or sports yet. So it's kind of, I think we're kind of in a similar place in a sense, even if it's still a little bit different. For sure. And I do my best to involve my family in, in my training. Like, for example, the other day I had a, a big trail run planned and, um, Sarah and Basin came along with me and and they kind of like walked around and were picking up sticks on the trail. And I was just kind of <laughs> like, you know, I'd go out for a little bit, then backtrack and check on them. And, you know, yesterday I was doing a high rocks workout where I would run like a mile around our neighborhood, come in and like do a station and they were just outside playing. So I do my best to, to incorporate my family um, in, into my training um, just because I don't know, like I want to spend more time with them, uh, you know, yeah. but, and, and I want him to kind of see what daddy's doing. Um, yeah. Like he'll see me running and he'll be like, daddy, run, daddy, run. And I'm like, oh, that's cool. You know, um, and yeah. he even tries to get like on the rower sometimes and like pull on the, pull on the cord. And, um, but I will say that I wish I had this. I thought I was a full-time pro athlete when I was doing Spartan races like a few years ago, but I don't think I really felt like a pro athlete until I like had a family and um, got a job and like was so focused because I had to be on the time that I was actually training. Whereas in the past when I was a full-time athlete, 
I got to sleep in. I got mm-hmm. to really just decide when I want to train, wake up, be like, oh, I don't really feel good right now. I'll wait a few hours to go train. Whereas like now it's like, no, I have a small window to get this done. And it either gets done during that window or it doesn't get done at all. And it getting not done is like not even an option. So you get up and do it. And I just wish I had this focus, this concentration on my training um, back when I was doing Spartan race full time, because I do, I had some great results. There's a lot of performances that I'm really, really proud of um, from, from my optical racing days. Um, But I do feel like I just wasn't as focused as I am right now. Um, yeah. on it and I do feel like I could have performed a lot better you know five six years ago um, on, on the Spartan circuit and um, yeah I, I think about that often because I'm, I'm I was not even like just not focused and, and concentrated on like what I needed to do because I had the freedom to just like I don't know I felt like I was just, like privileged you know like I just could just yeah it's like provided you like a structure that you might have needed I'm the same way where like even when I was in college like I was not a good college student if I wasn't competing so like if there were like seasons that I went through where I was like hurt and I wasn't like racing that much like my performance in the classroom even though I had more time went significantly down like I'm someone I'm very much like you like I need the pressure of like it's this or this, and it has to be this, you know what I mean? So I, I, I think I relate very much to what you're saying. What is your plan going through uh, the next month, like leading up to Worlds? I mean, you obviously ran a really good time in Anaheim. It's one of your faster times this year, obviously, um, yeah. at 57, so and- super solid. Yeah, I really believe that I'm in I'm in 55 shape right now, um, which, I mean, has to be like the best high rocks fitness that I've ever I've ever had. You know, like last year winning North Americans and finishing second at Worlds, um, even though I did honestly don't feel like I had a great race at Worlds. I think Hunter still would have beat me regardless, but I still think I was just off my game a little bit. Um, I'm just like, man, how, how can I get better than I was this year? You know, like this was, this was amazing. And, um, but believe it or not, it's like, I do feel, I feel so much more fit than I was last year. I think maybe in, you know, last year I, I was a little bit better of a runner, but I think as a, as a whole, cause high rocks is obviously much more than just being a good runner. I think just I'm, I'm better across the board in like every facet of high rocks than I was last year. Whereas last year I was just, I was really fit because I I was doing a ton of running and, you know, I was doing the bare minimum amount of like wall balls and lunges just enough to like get me through, through the race. But this year, man, I do, I do hundreds of wall balls every single week. I do hundreds of meters of walking lunges every single week. Um, I do cross training sessions now where I, you know, like, for example, today I have a long run. I'm doing like, I don't know, I might, the goal is an hour 40. If I feel good, I might do two hours. And then in the evening, I'm doing like 45 minute to an hour cross training session where I'll go from like rower to skier to a salt bike and just kind of like, you know, mix around that a little bit. Um, But last year I was doing, I don't know, like, I'd maybe row or ski like a few kilometers a week and like, I'm talking like maybe three or four, but now I would say I row and ski at least 10 to 12 kilometers a week. I'm on the assault bike a lot more for like just extra volume strength and strengthening those legs. Um, So I think, yeah, just as a whole, I feel so much more fit this year. The race doesn't break me down like it has in the past. And, uh, I mean, I feel good. The next, so last week, this last week was a pretty big week for me for training. Um, my mileage was, I think, 58 last week with like a ton of other stuff in there yeah. too. You know, you know what it is. It's strength training sessions. It's med cons. There's cross yep. training. I would say like, if you, if you took 
my schedule right now and put it into the running world, I would, I would be a hundred, a hundred mile per week, like athlete runner, you know, that's just how much volume I'm putting in right now. Yeah. Um, 14, 15 hours a week. Um, and so I have another, this week is another really hard week, high volume, high intensity. Um, and then probably like halfway through next week, I'll kind of take a little bit of a deload and then build back up again for a few days and then really kind of like taper down. I like doing a mini taper before I yep. actually do um, a full taper. That way I can let my body really absorb some of the work um, that it's, that it's done and then, and then kind of peak back up a little bit and then really kind of plummet, plummet the, the volume and intensity down. Well, intensity kind of stays, stays up. We, but we still yeah. like lower the volume of the session. Right. Um, so I feel, I feel good. And, and I will say up until this year, I, I was very fit for, for high rocks, but I was still confused about how to race this thing. Like, yeah, I, I just didn't know how to pace it. Like, I'm just like, I'm just going to go out and let my body decide like what it wants to do. And, um, it wasn't until this year where I really kind of dialed that in and, and, and to be quite honest, it, it took getting embarrassed at the North American championships in Chicago this year to really just be like, dude, I got to figure this thing out, man. 